Science explorers, welcome to the Curious Kid Cast, where we answer all those wonderfully weird questions that make your brain go, What? I'm your host, Andy. And today, we're digging into something super slimy and squirmy worms. So, raise your hand if you've ever wondered what happens when you cut a worm in half. Put your hand down. I can't actually see you. But I bet lots of you are thinking, Yeah, don't they just turn into two worms? Well, hold on to your science goggles because the answer is way more interesting than just a yes or a no. It's like asking if pizza is delicious. There's a lot to unpack here. First, let's talk about what's actually inside a worm. Now, I know what you're thinking. Ew, gross! But trust me, it's super cool. Earthworms have these segmented bodies, kind of like a train with all the cars connected. But unlike trains, they don't have a tiny conductor wearing a hat inside. Wouldn't that be something? Here's something that'll make your jaw drop. Earthworms have five hearts. Five. That's like having a basketball team of hearts all working together. And all their important stuff. Their brain, hearts, and digestive system is packed into the front part, around segments 1 to 33. That's like having all your vital organs stuffed into your head and shoulders. Imagine if humans were built that way. We'd look like upside-down bowling pins. But Andy, you might be asking, what about the rest of the worm? Is the tail just there to look cute? Nope. The tail is super important for movement, and it's got this nerve cord that runs down the whole body. But, and this is the big but. Without those organs in the front, the tail can't survive on its own. It's like trying to drive a car with no engine. It's just not going to work. So, if you cut an earthworm near its head, around segment 10, something amazing might happen. The front part could actually live and grow a new tail. It's like if you lost your legs and then just grew new ones. Don't try this at home, though. It only works for worms. The new tail won't be an exact copy of the old one, and the worm might be a bit weaker, like when you're getting over a cold but it shows how incredibly tough these little wigglers are. It's a super complicated process with cells dividing and becoming different types of cells. Basically, it's like the worm's body is saying, hmm, we seem to be missing a tail. Let's make a new one. But what about the other half, the tail end? Does it just stop moving instantly? Actually, the tail might still twitch for a little bit, which is pretty spooky. It's because of leftover nerve activity. Even though it's not connected to the brain anymore, the nerves in the tail can still send signals. It's like when a chicken runs around. Well, you know the saying, but without all those vital organs, the tail end is eventually going to stop moving for good. Sorry, tail end. Now, if you're thinking, so no magical second worm from the tail end, but the front part will definitely survive, right? Well, not always. It depends on what kind of earthworm it is, where exactly you cut it, and how healthy the worm was to begin with. If the cut is too close to the vital organs, even the front part might not make it. It's complicated, like trying to explain why adults think doing taxes is important. No, no, but wait, there's more. Have you heard of these amazing creatures called planarians? These are flatworms that are basically the superheroes of the worm world. Imagine cutting a planarian into a bunch of pieces, and each piece becomes a whole new worm. It's like if you cut up your sandwich and each piece grew into a full sandwich. Lunchtime would be awesome. How do they do this incredible trick? It's because of their amazing stem cells. Planarians have these special cells all over their bodies that can turn into any other type of cell, muscle cells, nerve cells, you name it. It's like they have this built-in repair kit that can rebuild their whole body. If only we had that power when we break our toys. Scientists are studying planarians like crazy, trying to figure out how they do this regeneration thing. Imagine if we could understand how they regenerate and use that knowledge to help people. That would be like having a real-life healing superpower. But not all worms are created equal in the regeneration department. Take leeches, for example. Even though they're related to earthworms, they're actually terrible at regenerating. If you cut a leech in half, both halves will probably die. It's like they missed the memo on the whole regeneration superpower thing. Dear leeches, there's a meeting about growing back body parts. Please attend. Sincerely, Evolution. 
So we've got earthworms that can sometimes grow back a tail, planarians that are basically immortal, and leeches that. Well, they're good at other things, I guess? The world of worms is super diverse. It's like a whole universe of wiggly creatures with different superpowers. Now, you might be wondering, if it's not always true that cutting a worm makes two worms, why do people still think that? Well, remember how the tail keeps twitching even after you cut it? That movement can trick people into thinking both parts are alive. It's like a visual illusion, not actually alive, but it looks like it is. Plus, when people hear about those amazing planarians, they think all worms must be the same. That's like assuming all humans can swim just because you saw Michael Phelps in the Olympics. Hey, speaking of worm myths, have you ever wondered why worms come out when it rains? Is it because they're drowning? Nope, that's another myth we can bust. While worms do need moisture to survive and they breathe through their skin, they can actually handle a little bit of water pretty well. It's not like they're panicking and thinking, help, help, I need an umbrella. The real reason worms come out when it rains is probably because the rain makes the soil softer, which makes it easier for them to move around and dig. And some scientists think they might come up to the surface to meet other worms. That's right, it's like a romantic rainy day date for worms. Hey, nice segment pattern you've got there. Now, let's talk about why worms are so important. Earthworms are like tiny engineers that are always digging around in the soil. They bring air into it and make it richer with their castings. And by castings, I mean worm poop. I know, I know. Ew, gross! But worm poop is actually amazing stuff. Worm poop is full of nutrients that plants need to grow, and it helps improve the soil structure. So even though they're small and we don't always see them, earthworms are super important for keeping the soil healthy. They're like underground farmers keeping the soil fertile for everything else. I never thought I'd say this, but worm poop is pretty awesome. It's probably the only poop I'd be excited about. So what can we do to help protect these amazing creatures? First off, we need to appreciate and respect these animals. Learn about why they're important and stop believing those myths that lead to misconceptions. The more we know about worms, the more likely we are to appreciate and protect them. One simple thing is to be careful about how you garden. Try not to use harsh chemicals and pesticides that can hurt worms and other good stuff in the soil. Go for organic methods instead. It's like being a good neighbor to your underground worm friends. Composting is awesome too. It's a great way to cut down on waste and make nutrient-rich soil. And guess who loves compost heaps? Worms! It's like an all-you-can-eat buffet for them. Table for 10,000, please. Scientists are even studying how planarians regenerate so well, hoping that one day we might be able to use that knowledge to help humans. Imagine if we could grow back a finger if we accidentally cut it off. That would be both super useful and super gross at the same time. So, there you have it, curious kids. Next time you see a worm wiggling around, remember, it's not just some random creature. It's a vital part of the ecosystem, a marvel of evolution, and maybe even a key to unlocking some of the biggest mysteries in biology. Be kind to worms. They're doing way more for us than we realize. It's pretty crazy to think that these little guys we usually don't even notice could be the key to some big scientific discoveries. Everything in nature is connected, and there's still so much we can learn from the world around us. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Curious Kid Cast. If you did, please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. And hey, if you have any questions you'd like me to answer in a future episode, drop them in the comments below. Maybe your question will be our next deep dive. Remember, stay curious, keep asking questions, and I'll see you next time on the Curious Kid Cast. This is Andy. Signing off and saying, Worms rule, myths drool. Bye for now. Hey.